God has been so good and gracious. How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your phones, whatever you use for, uh, for your, the Scripture? I still use the old Bible. I just kind of like that book. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with it. Believe in technology. And, uh, uh, and, uh, but God is so good and gracious. So we thank you today. If you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6. We preached the other day, I think it was last week, on Matthew 6, 33, on who's on first or who is first. I, I want to continue in this chapter. And uh, I, I felt led of the Lord. The Lord gave me something. And I want you to write this down. This is a statement. Being undisturbed is helpful to concentration of thought. <coughs> Excuse me. Being undisturbed is helpful to concentration of thought. See, and you've heard me say it many times. Preaching should never supersede thought. It should make you think. So being undisturbed is helpful to concentration of thought so that you have your faculties in every area of your life. Jesus is talking here in Matthew chapter 6. I think I'm going to start with verse 1, and then I'm going to read on down to verse 6. Jesus said, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father which is in heaven therefore when thou doest thy arms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men verily I say unto you they have their reward verse 3 but when thou doest arms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that doesn't mean you can't tell people what you've given this is, about, um, this is helping the poor here See, you know, a lot of people want recognition. You know, I do a lot of things, and they say, man, you ought, to, you ought to tell people. No, I'm not doing that because of the Scripture. That doesn't mean you can't tell people that you, what you're giving. See what I'm saying? But when you're dealing with the poor, you should protect their dignity. You see what I'm trying to say? So if I give to a food bank, you'll never know about it. Think about that. There are a lot of people do that. If I give the missionaries, you're not going to know about it. I'm just going to do what God tells me to do. See what I'm saying? Why? I keep reading with me. Verse 4. That, thy, that thine arms may be in secret, and in thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So in other words, God is watching you. Amen. Verse 5. When thou prayest, now he goes from arm giving to praying, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, or secret place, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret or in the secret place. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I want to talk this morning about the secret place. Everyone should have one. Now I'm not talking about getting so literal, but you can have a, a, a closet. But I'm talking about the secret place. God has a secret place. He said, I will hide you in the secret place of my pavilion. I believe that's in the book of Psalms. Every one of you should have that place where you undisturb and that the concentration of thought, you will hear yourself think. You will hear the Spirit of God. So nothing will distract you. Some place, somewhere. It could be in your house. Jesus did it on top of mountains. Now, what I love about Jesus, there's a lot of things about Jesus that we don't know about. He left no memorabilia. Think about that. None. But wouldn't you like to know what his mother was like as, he, as he, she was raising him? When did he become aware of the message and the calling that he was the son of God, even though he said he was the son of man? We'd like to know those things. Some people... Some people write biographies about themselves, which is great. Some won't do that, so the other people do it. So you can know some things. There's a lot of things 
that Jesus kept very secret, yet you could open up his heart real quick. A child could open up his heart. Someone that repented would open up his heart, and he would speak things about himself and about what God, his father, would do. He was very susceptible to people who loved him and reached out to him, and we'd open up secret things. I want to talk about the secret place. Enter in. So write this down. The secret place is made to close off the spirit from all distractions. The secret place is made, or the closet, call it what you want, to close off the spirit from all distractions so you can feel alone with God. There's a reason for that. Jesus honored that. And the Bible said, well, he said, I only say what my father says and I only do what my father says to do. Now, how did he know that? Because he'd go to the secret place. Even though he was totally tired in his body, preach all day, and then he would tell the disciples, y'all go ahead and get a place, and he'd send the multitude home. And instead of going to his disciples, he'd go up the mountain and pray. Might pray all night to the secret place. Could be under a tree. Could have been a chapel in his house. Could have been whatever. And even though he prayed all night and preached all day before, he would be at the synagogue the next morning because he was a churchgoer. Now, the reason for that is just what I said. The secret place is made to close the spirit from all the close the spirit off from all distraction. So you feel alone with God because then it's just you and God. Two of you agree. You begin to hear the voice of the Lord. Because you see, he will speak through your spirit through a renewed mind, which is, which is the soul of man, uh, mind, will, and emotion, to a crucified body. Everyone should have it. I have a chapel in my home. I find a lot of times people buy these big, huge homes in England and in France and everything, and they start uh, refurbishing them. And I've heard people say this. This used to be a chapel. I'm changing it into a sitting room. That was someone's secret place where they could go be before God without any distraction, talk spirit to spirit because God is spirit. You worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, Write this down. In the secret place, we become aware of the value of things which we often overlook. See, when you go in and talk with God spirit to spirit, you become aware. So the secret places were made for awareness, you and God. In the secret place, we become aware of the value of things which we often overlook. Even in the secret place, you can become aware of just how beautiful this planet is, how beautiful flowers are. Because you become aware. See, and it can be spiritual, physical, and financial. Like when we have a guest speaker, we say, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those or of the household of faith. Why? Because we become aware that God has sent someone to speak a word to us. So it's more than a church thing. It's a closing off of distraction to your spirit so God can speak to you. And sometimes he just want to talk. He may not give you any direction. He knows you're going to be guided by the spirit of truth anyway. He just wants to kind of hang out with you, for lack of a better way to say it. Hallelujah. So in the secret place, we become aware of the value of things which we often overlook. It's amazing how many things he's created that we overlook. Flowers. If you ever seen some of these rose petals, some of these flowers under a microscope, you'd be amazed the workmanship of God's hands. But we overlook some of those things. See, because we haven't closed ourselves off. So the world, we're, being, we're absorbing the world around us, yet we're overlooking the, really the best things that are around us. Write this down. In the secret place, you find out what you should be grateful for. In the secret place, you find out what you should be grateful for. Your message is shaped in your mind when you find out what you're grateful for. What are you grateful about? You know, when I was building this building, I was so honored that God would choose me to build a building. Why would you choose me? I, know, I, I can't even nail a nail straight. I'm not mechanical. I can't fix things. Kathy is way more mechanical than I am. Sometimes I used to tell her, a lot of time, I'd give her a screwdriver, go fix my Harley. You know, she could figure it out. That is amazing to me. If something went wrong, Jesse, don't put your hand on it. You're going to break it more. Let me have it. 
<laughs> and she could do it. I was grateful that she was a mechanic. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You find out just how valuable someone is. And sad to say, some people don't know what they have till they lose it. Boy, you don't want to you don't want to learn about it after you lost it. So in the secret place, you find out what you should be grateful for. Your message is shaped in your mind, which is in the soulless room. It's because the spirit sends it to the soul, it's shaped in your mind. Then you're able to implement what God has spoken to you. That's why a lot of people don't understand the things of God because they never go to the secret place to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. They're so distracted about all the other things. I'm not distracted about this hurricanes. I don't deny them. I'm not stupid. I don't deny them. But I, what am I attracted to? The bloodline, pleading the blood. And like I, I was telling Kevin in the back of walker, I, I've had people say, Brother Dad, suppose all this place was destroyed, what would you do? Rebuild it. I build it again. That ain't the issue. Now, I don't like to pay for the same real estate twice. And I certainly ain't believing for it. I'm not going to do what they tell me. You know, prepare for one stronger. Yo, mama, I ain't doing that. That's craziness. It's kind of like prepare yourself <laughs> For, uh, uh, you, you got to abscess, but prepare yourself for cancer. No, no, I'm not going to do that. You see what I'm saying? You'd be surprised how that stuff gets around you and gets in you. Which is my next point. Beware of the cares that try to absorb you. They try to absorb you so you, you can't hardly think any other way. That is what's happened with this pandemic. We've become so absorbed that sometimes we ain't thinking straight. How can you expect someone to complete their business and only have 25% business when they need every dollar that's coming into that business, which affects people? And the people telling you that, they're, not, they're getting their money, so it's easy for them to say it. Now, I'm not being critical here, I'm just being truthful. You become so absorbed with the problem that you cannot see the answer. Why? Because you hadn't been in the secret place. Where's your closet? Because I'm going to tell you something about God. He's in your closet. So let me go over these points again real quickly. The secret place is made to close off the spirit from all distraction. So you feel alone with God. It's good to be alone with God. It means more than... Uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't read that, I'm going to read that one in a minute. In the secret place, we become aware of the value of things which we often overlook. See, so the secret place, that's what Jesus was saying when you pray. Go in the secret So awareness begins to take place. That you are spirit, housed in a soul, and clothed in a body, and God wants to talk to you. Amen. I said to you, in the secret place, you find out what you should be grateful for. Your message is shaped in your mind. Spirit, soul, and body. Then I said, beware of the cares that try to absorb you. See, people think for some re reason or another, that if you go to the secret place, that's mental seclusion. No, no. It means more when you go into the secret place. Or the it means more than mental seclusion. It's the spirit's place for communion with God. You see, that's what Jesus would have communion with God. It's more than mental seclusion. So when that happens, you know what is brought into you? Stability. You become stable. People, things that are unstable are dangerous. So it's more than mental seclusion. Just trying to go in a room somewhere. No, no. It's going to bring stability in your life. The spirit place is where you commune with God. That's why we, when we take the, the last supper, we call it communion. We're communing it with his death, burial, and resurrection. It's more than just a thing you do. That's why Jesus said this, do this in remembrance of me. Not in remembrance of the thing. Not in remembrance, of, but of him. Making sure that when you eat that host, you know that his body broken. When you drink that juice, that's his blood being shed. Now, the way to know those things is done through communion. Now, the reason why I know the devil couldn't kill me, because God said I shall live and not die. Amen. And I've been down in three airplane crashes. Which will make you speak in tongues, make a Baptist speak in tongues in a second. <laughs> Nobody fights each other on a plane when it's going down. And I've never heard anybody say Buddha. <laughs> Muhammad, I'm not being critical here. 
You know what I heard? Jesus! Because he's alive and well. How do I know that? Communion with him. The secret place. So I don't let the things that are around me become absorbed, the cares of this world, absorb, be for me to absorb, or the deceitfulness of riches. Well, in other words, as God gives me way more money, I mean, I, I don't get deceitful about it because, you see, I'm not absorbing that. Amen. See, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you can't put no more in you. And nothing else can get in there neither. Amen. That's why God said when you cast the devil out, get rid of because they, they'll go to and fro on the earth, and if they can't find someone again, they come back. But if that person is filled with the Spirit of God, they got to go on. Right. So let me say it again. Beware of the cares that try to absorb you. So it's wonderful to be grateful. How many times have I said, Lord, did I say thank you enough? He said, you did. I said, well, I'm going to say it one more time. I love my conversations. My conversations come with God when I'm in my secret place. And sometimes I go and he says, what, Jesse? I said, I don't know. I just come to say hi. I just come to say, hello. Hey, how you doing? That sounds odd. I know it's not odd. When you know each other instead of just believe each other. When you know in whom you have believed and you're persuaded that he's able to keep what you commit to him. So what are you committing to him? Do you see what you understand what I'm saying? See, that's the secret place. Let me say it again. Being undisturbed is helpful to concentration of thought because now the only voice I'm going to hear is his. Write this down. In the secret place, we get a sense of perspective. So in other words, number one, you get a sense of awareness. Number two, you get a sense of perspective. In the secret place, we get a sense of perspective. What is perspective? What does it do? Perspective helps you to see your life in true proportions. How many times you put on clothes and you go, that don't look like me. No, that's you. <laughs> or you hear yourself on tape somewhere. That's not, that don't sound like me. Yes, it is. Everybody else says it is. See, perspective causes you to see your life in true proportions. Let me say it again. Perspective helps you see your life in true proportions. So I know in whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. I know what I'm going to do. I know when I'm going to get there. See, most people don't know where they're going. So when they get there, they pass it. Some people get so disturbed by cares that they get so weary and well do it, they faint. He said, let us not be weary and well do it. Why? Because you're going to faint. But you don't want to faint. You want to be there when the thing shows up and shows out. Amen. So to get true proportions, you have to have perspective. Kathy asked me about that this morning. She put on that navy blue blouse. What, do you like this? She was asking from my perspective. I said, yeah, I like that. It's really nice. I think I'm going to put a gray something. What do you call that thing? A shawl? Not a shawl. A scarf with it. I said, fine. Well, she wasn't finished yet. She wanted more of my perspective. And here's the next thing. Does it make me look heavy? I did not answer that. <laughs> and neither should you, if you want to live long. <laughs> then she put on some jewelry. What about this? What about that? Put on a piece of hair. I said, yeah, I, I like it. That's nice. Perspective. Awareness. She did it in her secret, in her closet. Kathy dresses in her closet. It's big enough. She likes to be in there. Well, that's good. So in the secret place, we get a sense of perspective. In the church, which is this is your home, away from home, you get a sense of perspective. That's why you don't like people sitting in your pew. I'm going, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Lift your hand up. You know that your butt feels better in your pew than in this social distancing. Am I correct? Why? Perspective, awareness. What you're doing is taking ownership, which is a wonderful thing. You see, that's why it's, it's, it's wonderful. Write this down. Never brood over small misfortunes or disappointments. Why? They darken your surroundings. Never brood over small misfortunes. Sometimes things blow up. Or disappointments. Sometimes we have some disappointments. 
You don't brood over them. You don't deny them. You don't brood. They darken your surroundings. See, you got to push the light. You've heard me say that many times. If you push the light, darkness won't have a place to manifest. Have you ever heard me, anybody watching me all over the world, here said, we don't know what we're going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not bragging about that. Why? Been in the secret place, been in the closet. Yes, sir. Now, there's been some times I say, Lord, I need to question some things. And he didn't, wasn't disturbed about it because sometimes you need to more than believe. You need to know. You got to get beyond belief. See, so perspective helps you, your life you see your life in true proportions, and, and when you see your life in true proportions, you do not brood over small misfortunes or disappointments simply because they're dark and you're surrounded. Yeah, but Jesse, look at this. I don't want to look at that. I have the power to look at what I want to look at. It all has to do with what I want to do. It all has to do with what you want to do. Like Kathy the other day, she said, listen, Jesse, I want to go home. She said, I, I, I ordered something. I'm going to go get it now. I said, well, can we, can we, we're going to go out this afternoon late, and we're going to go grab a bite to eat. We get, no, no, I want to go now. <laughs> so she gave me a prophecy. Take a nap. <laughs> Which I received. <laughs> so I went to one of my favorite chairs, and, I did, and she went and get whatever she was, whatever she ordered, I don't know. I didn't know, it turned out to be some glasses, I think. I think the ones that he has on. Wait, so I said, she said, you like these glasses? Looking for perspective, awareness. I said, yeah. I said, they're prescription, right? Yeah. I said, she said, they're uh, designer frames. Is that what you say? Some kind of frame thing? Which means there's more money than I thought. <laughs> but I don't need to worry about it because she takes care of all that. You see, so I'm not going to brood over my misfortune. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you how much. But <laughs> why? Because she will darken my surroundings. <laughs> I know how to preach a point, ladies and gentlemen. You understand? I know how to get your attention. <laughs> yeah. The other day, uh, we went to eat at P.F. Change with Kevin and Kathy and I. They're great friends, spiritual sons and daughters. Got great ministry. You know, <laughs> we've been on diets, really watching us. And Kevin, he ordered some combination fried rice with extra white onions and broccoli. He, he got he to make it different. <laughs> and he's sitting there eating. I said, Lord, tell him to give me a piece of that meat. <laughs> he did not obey but I did not brood over my misfortune. <laughs> I did some fun. But if I said it, he went, oh yeah, but take what you want. Actually, I didn't need to ask. It's the same thing. Well, got, just take what you want. So I just, I don't ask Kathy. I just reach over with my fork and get some. And she says, I was going to eat that. I said, well, don't brood over your misfortune. I'll order you another order. Oh, then I'm going to eat too much. I said, my, you can't, you can't win for losing here. <laughs> so, but so many people brood over those things. That's right. yeah. And it darkens the surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Write this down. Your life must be reviewed under the light of God. That takes time and patience. Your life must be reviewed under the the light of God. That takes time and patience. That's why you go to this secret place. He said, when you get in your closet, what God sees, you got to remember, God's in there waiting on to talk to you. Yes. See, why? Why does God do? Because he don't want distractions. He wants to hear 100% of what you got to say. Isn't that wonderful? He's so interested in you because you're his child. Think about that. See, so it's more than just praying. It's more than just relationship. It's fellowship. Now you're doing something. God, I'm cutting out. That's what fasting's all about. It's not just so you can starve. You just shut down the natural generator and turn on the spiritual generator. 
Even Apostle Paul talked about uh, physical things, you know, and married life. In other words, sometimes you have to separate yourself from your wife or your husband, you know, so y'all don't get together and fast and pray. In other words, he wants your undivided attention. Kathy wants my undivided attention sometimes. See, well, she doesn't know I hear everything she says. And a lot of times while she's talking, I'm thinking, she said, are you listening to me? Yes, you want me to repeat it? That makes her mad. No. I said, I can repeat it word for word. I heard it all. Well, look at me when, uh, well, sometimes when, if you ever notice one people when they start thinking about something, they'll do this. She don't like that. My mind gets to thinking, so, uh, you know, I'll look off somewhere. She wants that undivided attention. Your life must be reviewed under the light of God. This takes time and patience. Now, who don't want it yesterday? Everybody wants it yesterday. My God. We're Americans. We like fast food. We like it all fast. We, we, we actually save slow and spend fast. We like it fast. Just burn it all. That was one thing I always did when I went on vacations was spend all I brought. I wasn't going to save it to pay a bill. I used to go with my brother-in-law, Deborah and Jules. These were when the kids were little, and I would be little Jules and uh, Ryan and uh, Julie and... Um, of course, Jody, they were little girls, little, little kids, you know. And they loved, they said, we want to go with Uncle Jesse. Because as soon as we got in that van, like we might go to Destin, I turned around and said, okay, where are we going to stop and eat at? Well, it's not ready. It, it, it ain't, we ain't ready for lunch yet. I said, no, I'm talking ice cream and cake and, and candy. Oh, they said, pull over. By the time I got them to Destin, they were on sugar highs. <laughs> and it might be the last day. And I said, I got $100 left. Let's burn it. I don't want to go home. I worked all year long for that vacation. I worked hard. You see what I'm saying? Save money so I can have a good time. I'm not going to go home. He said, well, I'm going to try to save money. No, 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 no. Now, well, sometimes I, I love raw onions, you know, the kind that's what they call them things, them are sh sh shallots, you know, they, they long. But the problem I have when I eat those things, they make me burp. <laughs> and they were in the back of the van. Kill them, man. <laughs> I eat a whole shallot, and they go, ow, oh, open up. <laughs> they get so mad. And sometimes I had a van in those days, didn't have no seats in the back. And no windows. And no windows. <laughs> So I'd say, well, get some lawn chairs. Y'all just sit back there. They can play, the kids can play on the carpet. But I'd do it on purpose. <laughs> and they go flying up against the wall. It was all carpeted. Hanging on. And I just enjoyed myself <laughs> with my shallots. <laughs> Sometimes it got so bad, they said, let's stop and have an ice cream. So they could get away from that onion smell. I like onions. I always have like onions. You see, and, 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 but I, when I got home, I could give you good memories of my vacation. And if I flew out, I said, I want enough money to get my car out the parking lot. And he said, how was your vacation? It was wonderful. Now, the reason why I did that, I reviewed that vacation before I went on it. I put it under the light. So I knew what I was going to do. I knew I was going to have a good time. And it takes time and patience to do those things. So remember this, you're going to get it. It's kind of like when you're growing up, you just can't wait to be 18. Oh, God. You know, it takes 35 years to become 18. <laughs> I mean, yeah, young people go, oh, nah. Boy, but when you pass 25, it begins to speed up, don't it? All of a sudden, you're 50. You say, Lord, put the slow down. No. <laughs> Why? Your mindset changes. See, so the secret place produces awareness and produces perspective. And it gives you concentration of thought that you now hear God. And I love these points coming up. Ready for this? In quietness, God speaks. If we listen patiently and honestly, in the quietness, in quietness, God speaks. Even when there's a Holy Ghost meeting going on like crazy, people shouting, screaming, it's that still small voice. Grabs that attention. In quietness, he speaks. That's why Jesus, that's what Jesus was saying. Get to your closet, get to your secret place. 
because I got some wonderful things to talk about. And he'll tell you your whole future. If we listen patiently and honestly, that's a wonderful thing. Right, this now. In quiet times, well, let me go back up to that other point, then I'll come to this. So you write it down. In quietness, God speaks if we listen patiently and honestly. What is he saying? Now, this other point. In quiet times, the convictions of our faith strengthens its hold on us. In quiet times, the conviction of our faith strengthens its hold on us. My God, now faith is the substance of things hopeful, evidence of things not seen. So I don't care how long it takes because my faith is in the now. That faith is strengthened. That conviction is strengthened. And it takes hold of you. That all you can think about is that faith, that thread of the fabric of God clothes that clothes you. It strengthens. I love that. It's hold on you. I've had people say, boy, but Jesse, you're so strong on it. Well, I've been in the quiet times. I've been in the quiet places. And what it did, it strengthened my conviction, boy. And it, it holds me more. So when I see something uh, that I don't want to see, like hurricanes and stuff like that, instead of going, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I mean, I mean, it's terrible what's happening in Lake Charles and things like that. But I remember in, uh, when Hurricane Audrey hit Cameron. Anybody remember that? Over 400 people died. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. I remember Hurricane Betsy in 1965 coming up the mouth of the Mississippi River. Hurricane Camille, 1969. These things are emblazoned in my mind when it hit uh, uh, Biloxi and, and those areas. It was terrible. But you know, you go to Biloxi, it still looks pretty good. They rebuilt it. Now, some people left, can't handle it. And, and that's okay. You can, you can move. That's not the issue. You got to go where you feel God wants you to go, where you feel peace at. But if you're running from trouble, it's going to follow you. It'll show up in Portland, Oregon. It'll show up in the craziest place you ever thought. See, but if you defeat it, having done all the stand, stand therefore, it'll get away from you instead of getting close to you. So, in the second place, God has an opportunity. Or in the secret place, God has an opportunity to become real to us. Think about that. So there you have awareness, perspective, opportunity. In the secret place, God has an opportunity to become real to us. Is God real to you? Or is your religion real? I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm Episcopalian, I'm Presbyterian, I'm Pentecostal. Woo, I'm charismatic. Where's it God and all this stuff? Has God become real to you? You know how you know when he's real? When everything's going wrong, not when everything's going right. <clears throat> Anybody can talk faith when you got a pocket full of money. It's when, oh my God, how are we going to do this? In the secret place, God has an opportunity to become real to us. Why? Because in quietness he speaks, if we listen patiently and honestly. In quiet times, the convictions of our faith strengthens its hold on us. I got to stay on that for a minute. See, I know so much about it that I have a hard time getting sick. When you saw me sick? Better you've been knowing me a long time, huh? Since we kids, what, 13, 14, maybe even earlier than that, I guess. Oh, Lord Jesus. Is it because I'm better than you? No, it's just that what happened is in those secret places, that faith, man, it's, those convictions of it strengthens and holds me more. Come on. I mean, I don't like disappointments. I don't like misfortunes. I've had some, but I don't brood over them. You ever notice a lot of preachers always preach the bad stuff that happened to them? You ever heard of testimonies? Anybody got a good one? Yeah, the devil been beating my brains out always. Shut up. I don't want to hear all that. Then right at the end, but the Lord... So you gave Satan all his glory, and then finally you said, and God. Come on. 
I remember one time I went preaching Jennings, Louisiana. Me and Kathy and Meredith. No, no Meredith, my, my, my grandbaby. Jody. Jody was little. What, uh, five, six, something like that? When I got there, I said, uh, do y'all have evangelistic quarters? Yes. Oh, I said, because we you know, thought we were going to get a hotel. The evangelistic quarters was a Sunday school room. He said, you and Sister Kathy, your daughter can sleep on the floor. Am I right? I've slept on the floor before. Me and my brother, we slept in an eight-foot wide, 32-foot trailer on the floor. I turned out all right. I looked at that. And if you want to go to the bathroom, you have to walk down the hall. So, me and Kathy, we did not blink. You know why? Our faith has strengthened its hold on us. So, we slept on the floor. I slept with one eye and one eye, one eye closed and one eye open watching them roaches. <laughs> so they wouldn't bite Kathy or bite Jody. Oh, they didn't care. You know what was their reason? Scriptural. Thou hast to endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. I don't have to go through hard times to be a good soldier. Good soldiers have good character. What is it, hard times or good times? But it's the truth. Yet I didn't get mad about it. I said, well, they just missed an opportunity for the blessing of God in their life. But we never said nothing. Now, today, if they try to do that, I'll say, that's fine. I'll take care of my own uh, arrangements. I told one preacher one time in Alabama. <laughs> I said, I'll take care of my own hotel, food, and all that kind of stuff. He said, well, good. That's great. I appreciate that. Big church, 2,000. There. Kevin, there. So he invites out about 10 people to eat at this hotel that we're staying in. And he says, just put it on your rum bill. He ain't paying for it. Remember that guy there? Just put it on your rum bill. I said, sure. I didn't know I was going to buy for 12 people that day. Uh, he's not much in men. He's so sick and messed up because, you see, he loved to take advantage of people. That's sad. And I heard through the vine, man, everything that man just in plants touched prospers. You know why? I'm generous. I said, I'll buy you dinner. Fine. <laughs> I won't mention the preachers, but there's two preachers one time in Hawaii. And you know, when you go to those high class hotels, they have breakfasts and they start off at about $65, $70 for the buffet. <laughs> and they're sitting there eating. And one of the preachers says, you know, if we go to Denny's, we can get this same breakfast for $7.95. And the other preacher said, go. <laughs> Trying to save money on your vacation. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. My God, you worked all. Why don't you just enjoy what the Lord has placed in your hand? Amen. Yes. <laughs> you see, they, I think what it is, he didn't know for sure if God could bless him that strong. Come on. And you don't know that till the test comes anyway. Yes, sir. But it doesn't make any difference if you're not moved by what you see. you move moved by what you believe in. Yes. That's what I do. I'm not moved by what I see. I don't deny it. Because you see, because I've been in the secret place. Yes. I've had my ministry in my life under the light of God. Oh, Lord. And I, I've, I, I, I've paid the price for patience. Yeah. I did. I paid the price. I said, let patience have its perfect work. And I paid the price of time. I, I, it's not that I didn't want it yesterday. That's not the issue. But I still got it. Amen. Let me say this here. I want to close with this. Your heart was not meant... This is a point. Your heart was not meant to be a thoroughfare to traffic in business. It is meant to be a temple where God dwells. But a lot of people 
their heart is, uh, it's become, uh, what's the word, a thoroughfare to traffic in business. I had a great preacher, someone know who I, he'd say, uh, you need to learn to play golf. I don't like golf. I mean, golf's not a game, you know, but I, 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 they say it relaxes, not me. You don't, um, mm. In fact, I don't even speak in English. There's other words I say. I, can, I, can, I, I said, this game will send me to hell. I, gotta get, I can't play this game. <laughs> but his, his reason was, Jesse, people love you. I said, well, thank you. You need to learn to play golf. Man, you, you can get a lot of partners playing golf. I don't want to get around people to, for me just to try to get their money. But see, you become so callous to that that uh, it'll help the ministry. Ah. So you use a little deception. You're not there to enjoy that person. You're there to say, well, maybe. Now, you don't, that, uh, would you like that? No, you would, it would hurt your feelings, wouldn't it? At least it would, I mean, my God, man, were you trying to get around me just so I can give you something? I don't mind giving you something. That's not the issue. But the point, it would be wrong. See, that person's heart is at that time, on this particular thing became a thoroughfare to traffic in business. My partners come because God speaks to them. Amen. And I tell people where money's going. I, I, I'm very open about those kind of things. And uh, I don't ask people to do something I don't do myself. If I ask you to give, I give myself. Amen. I've had people say, you don't need to do that, brother Jesse. You've given your life. We've all given our lives to the Lord, for God's sake. Touch not God's anointing and do his prophet no harm, but we're all anointed if you're born again. Hey. Come on, talk to me, Jesus. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're special. You could be in the executive branch of God's government, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, but what you should be if you're in that five, four minutes is be more of a servant, be more of a blessing, yeah. instead of, some, you know, acting like the mafia, kiss my ring. You know what I'm saying? Let me say it again. Your heart was not meant to be a thoroughfare to traffic in business. And I, I'm a businessman. I believe in business. Let me understand me. This is when I'm going into the secret place, the closet. It is meant to be a temple where God dwells. I, oh, how can I say this? I've had God get excited because I was going to the closet. What? I, I got God said, my boy is coming. Well, how many times, man, my grandmother, when they were alive, both of them, They'd be standing outside on the steps waiting for us, the grandkids, to come. Just waiting to see us. My grandpas wouldn't, but the grandmas were. <laughs> <laughs> they just, we wait for Meredith and Jody to get around it. We just, we enjoy that. They, they sense it and know it. What's well, the same way with God? When I go to the, I went to the secret place this morning. I just walked in and he, my voice here. And I begin to hear the oracle of God. I begin to hear things in heaven as well as things on the earth. I begin to hear angel wings, physical, my physical ears. Whew, man. And how many times God said, what you think? He likes to know what I think. And there's been some times I say, you know, let's reason together here. If you really knew this person, you wouldn't love them. <laughs> Don't look at me weird. I've said that to God. Let me tell you, I know this guy. This guy's the devil from hell. <laughs> Sin in the hell. Nobody will think different of it. He said, I get no enjoyment out of someone going to hell. It had dawned to me, I would have enjoyed that boy going to hell. Because he was the most aggravating person I've ever seen in my life. But yet, Jesus died for him. He said, now, Jesse, you got to get past that. This was years ago. So I asked the Lord to forgive me. And then I said, I'm going I'm to I'm crucify my flesh. He said, what you going to do, Jesse? I said, I'm going to invite him to dinner. All right. All right. You're going you're gonna to invite him to dinner? I said, I'm a, I'm a, I ain't talking McDonald's. <laughs> Nothing wrong with McDonald's. I just I said, I'm going I'm to I'm crucify me. I learned to do those things. And I found all that in the secret place. Because God speaks when it's quiet. The still small voice. See what I'm saying? How many times when someone shared something 
and I'm it was about ready to receive an offering. And the Lord would just kind of pass by, like I'm passing by y'all on the front row and says, you could do that. Just a very small voice. You could do that. I said, well, if I did, then no one else would get the blessing. He said, no, that would be the overflow. Yes, sir, I'm yours to command, Jesus. I ain't going to tell anybody something like that. Took care of it. Now they had extra so they could do other things they never thought they would, would run into. You know, you know how things are. Then there's been times I went, I'm generous. I got a generous heart. I walk up and say, I'm going to be a blessing. And the Lord said, don't do that. If you do, Jesse, you're stopping my discipline. Now that really struck me when the Lord said that. Discipline. Because that's the only way I can get that guy's attention. I heard Brother Hagin say, and I, I asked Kevin, Kevin went to Ramah, I didn't go, uh, that God kept telling Brother Hagin to rest. Tell me if I'm correct, Kevin, I think it's right. And he just went, so he wound up breaking his arm. Well, God didn't break the man's arm. But he said, now nah, you're listening to me. You should have rested yourself. I never forget one time, Brother Hagin was 82, 83, and one of his board members passed away. Oh, Brother Kennedy, what a wonderful man. How Catholic, oh, Ralph Kennedy did not get any better. One of the greatest men God ever put in shoe leather. His wonderful wife, Margaret. Uh, Martha. Martha, not Margaret, Mar Martha. But I'm telling you what, I just love being around him. Well, he passed, so uh, Martha was so kind to allow me to be one of the speakers at the funeral, but the main speaker would be Brother Hagin. It was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. One of the best. Well, you know, we had three other speakers beside Brother Hagin. You know, we said a few things. Had about 10 minutes apiece, something like that. Maybe five minutes, something like that. Well, the place was jam-packed. And so then uh, the pastor of the place said, uh, Brother Hagin, come on up and give the main uh, message here. So Brother Hagin gets up. Now, he's 83, 84, you know. And he's walking. Now, Brother, I, 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 the, like this is the pew and I'm standing like this, and the, and the, and the, and the, well, let me do it over here so you can see it. Okay, I'm standing right here, pews right up against the, and there's the steps. Here comes Brother Hagin. Okay, now he's 83, see? He had gained a little weight. Who cares at 83? He does this. And I've seen his, he goes... So what I did, nobody noticed it. I just got behind him, up here, and I put my hand, his arms were like this, his arms were, and I put my hand under his uh, elbow, and I pushed up. And he went, it stabilized him. He, he looked at me and went, thank you. I said, you're welcome. It was one of the best things I ever did in my life. It felt so great. Just held him. He got him preached a marvelous message. When he came down, he looked at me, and I knew what to do. I just got a little close as he come down, you know, like, and as he came down, Kevin, I kind of, you know, his forward motion was coming, and I just did this, held him back a little bit, you know. He goes, thank you. I'll never forget that as long as I ever lived. I did it with R.W. Schambach, because the praise and worship leader kept singing and singing, everybody had been standing up for an hour, and that brother Schambach. <laughs> and he was 80-something, you know. And I saw it. So I just got behind him and took this hand. Oh, I had pain in my shoulder. And I took my hand under his elbow and I pushed up. And he goes, he just looked at me. Thank you. I said, my God, Lord, strike that worship leader dumb. <laughs> stop, stop the music. Because <laughs> my arm is in my shoulder. I held him, man. I, I'll never forget that long as I ever live. I got to be a blessing to the man of God. Now, wh why? Why? Because I was sensitive to their need. I had been in the secret place. And I close with this statement. Now, this is going to blow your socks off. You're going to have to be real spiritual to understand what I'm about ready to say. There's been times, for lack of a better way to say it, everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. That I'm standing by God. 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 Oh, I'm getting somebody mad. God. 
He starts to do this. Spiritually speaking, I put my hand on his elbow and I push up. And he looks at me and says, thank you. Because his capacity to hurt is far greater than yours. And his capacity to love is far greater than yours. So don't hurt him. How many of you have heard me say that? Andrew Womack said that's one of the greatest stories he tells. Every time I'm with him, we got preachers. Jesse, tell him that. When I, and I've told it here before, and I feel led of the Lord to say it again. I went in to do my morning devotion, boy, and i tell you what, Kevin, I, 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 I had an ointment in The ointment, we called it the anointing ointment. I was greased up. I was ready for, oh, Lord Jesus. I got in there, and, got, and something was wrong. I sensed it as soon as I walked into my secret place. He was there, but something was wrong, brother, and it wasn't with me. Oh, I'm going to make you mad, huh? You say, if you've been in the secret place, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It wasn't with me. And I, I said, because he wasn't acting the way he normally acts. I know God. I can tell when something's wrong with Kathy. I know her. I've been married for over 50 years. You know when something's wrong with your children? They may not have said that. You just know it, especially mamas. And I realized something was wrong. And it wasn't with me. Oh, Lord, look at people. They get, oh, oh, he thinks he's so spiritual. I am spiritual. Amen. I've been in the secret place. And I stopped. And Ricky, I said this, Lord, something's wrong. Did somebody hurt you today? And the Lord, in that quiet, still small voice, he said, my children have disobeyed me. It hurts me. I sensed it. I knew it. I said, Lord, not that he's God. He can do anything, you know. I said, Lord, I'm going to cancel all my appointments today. And I had a bunch of them, Ricky. I had a bunch of them that day. I said, I'm going to stay in this, my secret place. I said, I don't know how to say this to God and everything, but the best way I can say it in my mind is, so, for lack of, lack of a better way of saying it, so you feel better, till you feel better. Now, that, that didn't even come up to what I was trying to, but it's the only way I could think, you know. And man, I prayed and I worshiped the Lord. And I stayed there, and it must have been maybe 10 minutes. All of a sudden, I heard the Lord go, thank you, Jesse. You refreshed me. That's the secret place. That's what you find out. That's when Jesus said, when you go in your closet. In other words, don't give his time away. Because the most important thing you can do is spend time with him and allow God to be the God he truly is. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Did you understand the analogy? Yes. Because his capacity to love is far greater than mine. But then the other side of that coin, God's capacity to hurt is far greater. Can you hear some of his, some of his statements in the Old Testament? He said, Israel, when a whoring, that's the word he used, when a whoring with other gods. Have you, have you had one of your spouses, your spouse commit adultery on you? How that hurts? Drive a knife right through you? God said that. A whoring. Woo, that's hard. But people don't think, oh, that's God. Eh? No. His ability to love. Is, he's agape. I mean, he's so far beyond that. But his ability to hurt is the same thing also. He's a God of great feeling. But you won't know much about that. Until you get in the secret place. That's right. yes, sir. Yes. How many of you are going to form your secret place? Amen. Hold your hand up. Come on. Do that. Do that at times. Find your place. Don't get too literal on the, the place. You can. But spend that time. And watch God do unbelievable, impossible things simply because it's doable. And maybe one day you'll hear this. You refreshed me. You enjoyed it today? Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap for that. The secret place. Ooh, I like that sound.